salvation for our souls, <coughs> purity and righteousness are what pleases God. Fasting as he raised Moses up to the mountain to receive the law for us from the Lord our God. Fasting as he raised Elijah up to the heaven and saved Daniel from the lion's den. Our Lord Jesus Christ has fasted for us forty days and forty nights to save us from our sins. We too let us fast with purity and righteousness and let us also pray proclaiming and saying Our Father who art in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come for yours is the glory forever Amen. In the of my Lord I will praise forever and ever and from generation to generation I will declare your truth. My iniquities have covered me and burdened me. O God, hear my sighs and cast them away from me. Make me like the publican who has sinned against you. You had compassion for him and forgave him his sins. Make me like the adulteress whom you have redeemed. You have saved and rescued her, for she pleased you. Make me like the thief who was crucified on your right hand. He confessed to you and likewise said, Remember me, O oh my Lord, remember me, O oh my God, remember me, O oh my King, when you come into your kingdom. For you, my Saviour, have accepted his confession, you were compassionate to him, and sent him to paradise. Likewise I the sinner, my King and God Jesus, have compassion upon me and make me as one of them. I know that you are good, compassionate and merciful. Remember me in your mercy forever and ever. I ask you, my Lord Jesus, do not chastise me with your anger, nor also with your wrath. Do not punish me for my ignorance. For you do not desire the death of a sinner. Have pity upon my weakness and not look at me in anger. I have sinned, O my Lord Jesus. I have sinned, O my God. O my, ki o my King, do not count the sins which I have committed. I ask you, O my Saviour, let your mercies come to me and save me from the troubles that come upon my soul. Do not send me to the fire for my ignorance like Sodom, and likewise do not destroy me like Gomorrah. Blessed are you, o Mary, the prudent and the chaste, the second tabernacle, the spiritual treasure. The pure turtle dove that declared in our land and brought unto us the fruit of the Spirit. The Spirit of comfort that came upon your Son in the waters of the Jordan as in the type of Noah. For Noah's dove has declared unto us the peace of God towards mankind. Likewise, you are our hope, the rational turtle dove, have brought mercy unto us, carrying him in your womb. That is Jesus, our Lord, the only begotten of the Father, was born of you and set us free. Let us all declare with all our hearts and with our tongues to proclaiming and saying, Our Lord. Oh,
Jesus Christ, making us a sanctuary for your Holy Spirit, ever glorifying you. Hail to you, a virgin, a very and true queen. Hail to the pride of our race, who was born to us, Emmanuel. We ask you to remember us, O our faithful advocate before our Lord Jesus Christ, that he may forgive us our words. Be our advocate in the highest way you are, a lady of us all, the ever virgin Theotokos. Ask of him whom you have born, born our good Savior, to take away our afflictions and accord to us his patient in Eoti, Parthenos, Eoroemi, and Alithini. Share of Shoshan, Tevin, Genosari, Ekvonan, and Amen. We honor you, Mother of the True Lord, and glorify your Holy Virgin, Mother of God, for you gave birth to the Savior of the world. He came and saved our souls. Glory to our Master and King Jesus Christ, part of the Apostles, crown of the Martyrs, joy of the righteous, sinners of the Church, and the mission of sins. We preach the Holy Trinity, the one divinity, and we worship and honor. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord bless us, amen. Truly believe in one God, the Almighty God, the Father, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born Father before all ages, light out of light, true God out of true God, God not made, coessential with the Father, through all things came into being. He descended from heaven for us and for our salvation, and was incarnated of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us at the time of Pontius Pilate. He, he suffered, suffered and was buried, and rose from the dead. And the third day, according to the scriptures, he ascended to the heaven and sat at the right hand of his Father. He was living in the dead for sin, not be an end. Truly believe in the Holy Spirit, life and Lord, proceeds from the Father. We worship and glorify to the Father and the Son, and spoken the prophets in one of the church. And we look. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O God, have mercy upon us. Bestow your mercy upon us. Have compassion upon us. Amen. and help us. Amen. Take away your wrath from us. Visit us with your salvation and forgive us our sins. Amen. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ our God, who told his saying the apostles and pure disciples, saying, Many prophets and righteous men earnestly desire to see the things you are now seeing and have not seen them, and to hear the things you are now listening to but have not heard them. But as for you, blessed are your eyes, for they see and your ears, for they hear. May we be worthy to listen and to act according to your Holy Gospel through the petitions of your saints. We pray for the Holy Gospel. Lord, have mercy. Remember also, Lord, those who have asked us to remember them in our supplications and petitions that we offer to your Lord, our God. Repose the souls of those who have preceded us in departure and heal those who are sick. Be the life of us all, the salvation of us all, the hope, the healing and the resurrection of us. A psalm of David, Alleluia. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and hear me. I am restless in your complaint and more noisily Sit him a 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Bless, O Lord, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. chapter from the Holy Gospel according to our teacher Saint Matthew the Evangelist Apostle and pure disciple may his blessings be with us all Amen Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord our Lord God and Savior and King of us all Jesus Christ the Son of the living God glory be to you forever Amen for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out in early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. Now when he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right I will give you. And they went. Again he went out at about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle, and said to them, Why have you been standing here idle? Day. They said to him, Because no one hired us, he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right you you will receive. So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers, and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the uh, first. And when the came who were hired at about the eleventh hour, they each received a denarius. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each a denarius. And when they received it, they murmured against the landowner, saying, These last men have only worked for one hour, and you have made them equal to us who were born who have borne the burden in the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go your way. I wish to give this last man the same as I gave to you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things, or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. For many are called, but few are chosen. Glory be to God. Be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of heaven and ever. Amen. Chimpha Christos, Jesus Pinchos, Kifala Simon Kaklinati, Nopion So Kirie, Roscomet Metofovo, Amin, Nipasi, Get of Nevmati, so Master Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Lord of God the Father, who has broken every bond of our sins through saved life, King's sufferings, who breathed in the face of his apostles and disciples and said,
than receive the Holy Spirit. The sins you forgive are forgiven, the sins you retain are retained. Now also, O Master, have you in grace, through your holy apostles, to those who are time they've been a priest of your holy church, to forgive sins upon earth and bind us to the bond of iniquity. Now also we ask and treat you and remain kind for your servants, my fathers, my masters, my brethren, my weakness, those who bow their heads before your holy glory, dispense unto us your mercy. Loose every bond of our sins, and who have committed sin against you, whether in actions or words or deeds or from faint heartedness. You, O Master, and as weak as as good love, remain kind. Grant us the goodness of our sins. Bless us. Purify us, absolve us, absolve all your people. Fill us with your fear, strength, and holy will for you, our God. And the glory, honor, dominion, and worship are duty together in life, giving us central Holy Spirit. Now for more. Amen. Amen. Speaking of peace, grant us your peace, confirm unto us your peace, of you us our sins, for to use the power, glory, and majesty forever. Amen. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for everyone. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord have mercy. 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 Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. 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 
Lord have mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Glory and honor, honor and glory may be given to the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Grant peace and edification to one only, Holy Universal Apostolic Orthodox Church of God. Amen. Remember, O Lord, those who are brought unto you these gifts, and those on whose behalf they have been brought, and by whom they have been brought. Give them all a heavenly reward. Pray for the sacred and worthy of nations. And our sacrifices and for those who offered them, Lord have mercy. Alleluia, man's mind profess to you, Lord. His thoughts rejoice in you, Lord my God, the sacred. Vices and oblations accept them unto you only. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, blessed be God, the Father, the Almighty. Amen. Blessed be His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Amen. One is the Holy Father, one one is the Holy Son, one is the Holy Spirit, Amen. Blessed be the Lord God forever. Praise the Lord, all you nations, profess him, all you peoples. The strongest is mercy upon us, he's faithful forever, Amen. Alleluia. <laughs> Peace be with you all, and with your spirit. Let us give thanks to the gracious and merciful God, the Father of our Lord God and Saviour Jesus Christ, for his protected, assisted, preserved, accepted us, spared us, supported us, and brought us till this hour. Let us also ask him, the Almighty God, to keep us in peace his blessed day and all the days of our life. Let us pray. Lord have mercy. Our Master, Lord God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Saviour Jesus Christ, we thank you on every occasion, in every condition, and for all things. For you have protected, assisted, preserved, accepted us, spared us, supported us, and brought us to this hour. Let us pray that God have mercy and compassion upon us, hear us, sustain us, and continuously accept our prayers and supplication of his saints on our uh, behalf, and make us worthy to partake of these holy sacraments for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord have mercy. Therefore we ask and appeal to your goodness, O lover of mankind, that you grant us to complete this holy day and all the days of our life in peace and in your fear, all envy, all temptation, all works of Satan, all intrigues of the wicked rising up of enemies seen and unseen. Cast them away from us 
and from all your people, and from this holy altar and this church of yours. But those things which are good and profitable do provide for us, for you are he who has given us the power to tread underfoot serpents and scorpions, and over all the forces of the enemy. So The priests, the deacons, the clergy, my weak self, Pibs, Alth, Matthew, Alth, Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, from the Matthew, one holy, universal, apostolic church, to all apostles and pure disciples, the beholder of God, the evangelist, Saint Mark, the apostle and Marty, the patriarch, Saint Severus, our teacher, Dioscorus, Saint Athanasius, the apostolic, Saint Peter, the priest, Marty, Saint John Chrysostom, Saint Cyril, Saint Basil, Saint Gregory, the 318 assembled in Nicaea and 150 Constantinople and Turner Ephesus, from Matthew, my honorable father, high priest, Pope Abba, to Hydrus II, and his part in the apostolic ministry, I preach Rabbi Daniel. From mouth of my fathers of this church and my weak so for blessed and full of glory is your holy name, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Tis amen. Oh, 
us the forgiveness of our sins through the prayers of the blessed Patriot of Athanasios of Cyril of Discoros and Pachirellos of Lord grant us the forgiveness of our sins through the prayers of the righteous fathers of Antonios of Apode of Abacomios of Amacanios and of Ashinoda the forgiveness of our sins through the prayers of our fathers the righteous of Abraham Bishop of and of Michael of the Through the prayers of the righteous Archdeacon Habib Gerges, oh Lord, grant us the forgiveness of our sins. Through the prayers of all the saints. Of this day, each one in his name, the Lord grant us the forgiveness of our sins through their prayers. O Lord, preserve the servant of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the apostle was called and chosen to preach the gospel of God. From St. Paul's second epistle to the Corinthians, may his blessings be with us. Amen. For he says, in an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We give no offense in anything, that our ministry may not be, may not be blamed, but in all things we commend ourselves as ministers of God, in much patience in tribulations, in needs, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in sleeplessness, in fastings, by purity, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, 
by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affections. Now in return for the same, I speak to you as children. You also be open. The grace and peace of the Lord be with us all. Amen. May Catholic Hon selected from the epistle of our father James, may his blessings be with us all. Amen. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. For we will stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us, and we turn the, their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. So how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and says things in the world. For the world and its lust, for desires will pass away. And those who perform the will of God abide forever. Amen. Remember me, my Lord. Remember me. of our fathers, the apostles. May their holy blessings be with us all. Amen. Now after five days, Ananias, the high priest, came down with the elders and certain orator named Tertullus. These gave evidence of the governor against Paul. And when he was called upon Tertullus, he began his accusation, saying, seeing that through you we enjoy great peace and prosperity is being brought to the nation by, you, by your foresight, we accept it, always and in all places. Most noble Felix, with all things thankfulness, nevertheless, not to, to be tedious to you any further, I beg you to hear by your courtesy a few words from us, for we have found the man a plague, a creator of dissension among the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of Nazareth. He even tried to profane the temple and we seized him and wanted to judge him according to our law. But the command Elias came by and with great violence took him out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come to you. By examining him yourself, you may ascertain all these things of which we accuse him. And the Jews also assented, maintaining that these things were so. Then Paul, after the governor had nodded to him to speak, answered, Inasmuch as I have, that you have been many years a judge of this nation, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself, because you may ascertain that it is no it is no more than 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship, and, by neither, and they neither found me in the temple disputing with anyone, nor inciting the crowd, either in the synagogues or in the city, nor can they prove the things of which they now accuse me. But this I confess to you, that according to the way which they all 
which they call a sect, so I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. This being so, I myself strive to have a conscience without offense toward God and men. Now after many years, I came to bring alms and offerings to my nation, in the midst of which some Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with a multitude nor with tumult. They ought to have been here before you to object if you have anything against me, or else let those who are here themselves say if they found any wrongdoing in me while I stood before the council unless it is for the one statement which I cried out. Standing among them, concerning the resurrection of the dead, I am being judged by you this day. But when Felix heard these things, having more accurate knowledge of the way, he adjourned the proceedings and said, when Lysus, the commander, comes down, I will make a decision on your case. So he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for, for or visit him. May the word of the Lord grow and spread, be mighty and firmly held in the Holy Church of God. Amen. On this day, the 22nd day of the blessed month of Baramhat, Saint Cyril, the Bishop of Jerusalem, departed. This father was chosen in the year 348 AD as a successor for Amber Maximus, Bishop of Jerusalem, for his knowledge and righteousness. He did not stay long on his chair until a contention arose between him and Acacius, Bishop of Caesarea, about who had the right to be in primacy over the other. Kirillus's argument was that he was the successor of St. James, one of the twelve disciples. And Bacchirillus had sold some of the church vessels and distributed the money to the needy because of a famine that befell the land of Palestine. Acacius took this chance and made an effort to obtain an order to exile him from the country. And Bacchirillus was exiled without anyone listening to his case. In the year 359 AD, he appealed his case before the Council of Seleucia. The council called Acacius to hear from, his, from him his argument, but he did not attend. So they judged by removing him from his office and the return of Kirillos to his chair. He did not stay long, for Acacius went and enticed Emperor Constans to assemble a council at Constantinople, and the Arian bishops agreed with him. This council convened in the year 360 AD in order to exile the saint once more. When Constans died and was succeeded by Julian, who ordered the return of all the exiled bishops to their chairs, the saint returned to his chair in the year 362 AD and shepherded his people faithfully and honestly. But he resisted the Arians. They went to Emperor Valens, the Arian, who invalidated the order of his predecessor Julian, stating the return of the exiled bishops to their chairs. This way, St. Kirillos was exiled for the third time, where he remained until the death of Valens in the year 379 AD when Theodosius the Great reigned and assembled the 150 in a council against Macedonius. This father attended and opposed Macedonius, Sibelius, and other heretics. The saint composed many homilies and exhortations exceedingly profitable in the doctrines of faith and all traditions, then departed in peace. May his prayers be with us. Amen. On this day also the honored father and the unblemished bishop, and the Michael bishop of the chair of Nakada departed May his prayers be with us, and glory be to God forever. Amen. The great high priest, undefiled forever, holy God, according to the order of Melchizedek, perfect, holy, mighty, you became incarnate of the Holy Spirit and of the Holy Virgin Mary. Great is the mystery, holy, immortal. 
to have mercy on us, our Lord Jesus Christ, fasted for us forty days and forty nights to save us from our sins, so let us fast in purity and righteousness and pray to the Lord fervently saying I have sinned I have sinned oh my Lord Jesus Christ forgive me for there is no servant without sin, nor a Lord without forgiveness. Our Father who art in kingdom come for thine is the glory forevermore amen holy god holy mighty holy immortal who was born of the virgin have mercy upon us holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, who was crucified for our sake, have mercy upon us, holy, God, holy, mighty, holy, who arose from the dead and ascended to the heavens, have mercy upon us. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen, Holy Trinity, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Stand up for prayers. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. O Master Lord Jesus Christ our God, who told his saintly apostles and pure disciples, saying, Many prophets and righteous men earnestly desire to see the things that you are now seeing and have not seen them, and to hear the things that you are now listening to but have not heard them. But as for you, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. May we be worthy to listen and to act according to your Holy Gospel through the petitions of your saints. Pray for the Holy Gospel. Lord, have mercy. Remember also, Lord, those who have asked us to remember them in our supplications and petitions that we offer to you, o Lord our God. Repose the souls of those who have preceded us in departure and heal those who are sick. Be the life of us all, the salvation of us all, the hope, the healing, and the resurrection of us all. Son of David, Lilia. Oh, do not remember former iniquities against us. Let your tender mercies come speedily to me, thus for we have been brought very help us O god of our salvation for the glory of your name
Δώσετε με το βόβο Θεό, ακούστε με το Άγιο Ευαγγέλιο. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Bless, O Lord, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Δόξα σε κέρια. fear of God and listen to the Holy Gospel, a chapter from the Holy Gospel. According to St. Luke, the evangelist, apostle, and pure disciple, may his blessing be there with us all. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Lord God and Savior of us all, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Glory be to you forever and ever. Amen. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there he wasted his positions, with prodigal living, but when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. And no one gave him anything, but when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against you against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry, for this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. They began to be merry, and now his older son was in the field. And as he, as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come, and because he has received this safe, he, re he has received him safe and sound. Your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father ca came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, this many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed, nor your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, how you devoured your livelihood with, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted cow for him. And he said, Amen. In the, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today is the third gospel in Lent. It's the third week. 
um, and it comes from Luke chapter 15. It's a very famous gospel. Um, we've all heard it before. We've read it many times. And it's the parable of the two lost sons. It has many names. Um, it's been called the gospel within a gospel. It's a summary of the whole gospel. The prodigal son, the parable of the compassionate father, and the greatest story ever told. There are many lessons we can learn from this very beautiful parable. But it's actually one of my favorite. And one of the most things that I love about this, about this particular gospel is that it's from the mouth of Jesus Christ himself. We didn't make this up. We couldn't make it up. You know, in Lent weeks three, four, and five, which we start from today, so today's week three, it's all, all the stories, all the gospel readings we read are about repentance. You know, today we read about the two lost sons. Next week we'll read about the Samaritan woman, St. Fatini, the week after the paralytic man. And the, the concept is about coming back to God. Lent is very much about repentance. It's about reconciling with God and returning to God. I was speaking to someone recently, a young youth, and she was telling me she's really struggling with sin and keeps falling. And, and the reality is, you know, all of us are feeling this way at some point in our life. This particular youth was saying, Abuna, what's the point? I'm too far gone. God will not accept me. How can God accept me after I've done such a terrible thing? And this is true for many of us. And if you feel like you've ever felt this way or you're feeling this way right now, then listen very carefully because today's gospel is for you. If you're feeling like you've lost hope, if you're feeling like you've done something or your past is too colorful for God to ever think of you or put you up or esteem you in, in, in or put you in high esteem, then, then listen carefully to this very gospel. Jesus said this parable so that we can have in writing a glimpse into the character of our loving and merciful Father. There is there's something called worldly logic and there's godly logic. So for example, Luke 15 is full of things getting lost and things getting found. What do I mean by this? Um, you know, in, in the beginning of Luke chapter 15, there's a shepherd and the Lord says he's got a hundred sheep and one sheep goes missing. Worldly logic says, look after the 99, make sure you don't lose any more. If you can find that one sheep without compromising the 99, go for it, but don't spend too much time because you've got 99 to look after. That is worldly logic. God's logic is what? This happens, so of course, the shepherd leaves his 99 sheep, goes out and searches to find the whizzing one lost sheep. It, nothing else makes sense to God. This shepherd must go out and find this one sheep. Then, as we progress in reading Luke 15, there's a story about a lost coin. A lady has 10 coins, one of them goes missing. Worldly logic, look for it. It's worth one coin, whatever the value of that is. But if you don't find it, it's okay you've still got nine coins to look after. God's logic is you lose a coin, even though you've got nine others, turn your house upside down, find the coin, then when you find it successfully, chuck a party, invite everyone you know, which, and, and, and in this party, feed them, entertain them, be a hospitable host, very likely it's gonna cost you a lot more than that one coin that you found to throw this party. Nothing else in God's mind makes sense. And finally, we talk about a father with two sons. And, we lose, and, and the father loses his sons. What does the father do? So we go from losing you know, 1%, so one, one sheep out of 100. Then we lose 10% of what we have, one coin out of 10. And now this father loses 100%. Both his sons are lost in different ways. And so what does the father, and I'll focus today on what does the father do when this younger son returns? When this son came back, what did he deserve? What is worldly logic? Worldly logic is a good father will accept him back, for sure. Maybe in the old days, though, there'll be like a prerequisite, you know, there'll be like a belt would come out, a few backhands, you know, uh, thongs or a sheb sheb of some sorts, some form of discipline, humiliation, reprimanding, scolding, this boy will never live to forget that day. And the second he does another mistake, he will be reminded. Oh, but that's not fair? Yeah, it's not, because remember what you did, right? It will take a very long time 
to regain trust, to regain respect. And you know what? If the father did that, he said, go inside, I'm not talking to you. We would have all turned around with worldly logic and said, wow, what a great father for even accepting this little kid back after everything he's done. But what is God's logic? God's logic is so far polarized from this that it's not funny. God's logic is this, this father, and this father is resembling Christ, resembling God. Christ says, when this father, so Jesus is talking about himself here. He says, when this father sees this son from afar. How did the father know, by the way, that his son was returning that day? He didn't. In fact, the father must have been waiting every single day in the hope that his son will return to him one day. The father has been waiting for this very moment since the day the son left. While the, fa- while the son was away, the father's mind is completely preoccupied by his lost son. He's waiting for him to return. Many times we foolishly think that when we do something to disobey God or upset God or something, whatever, that God forgets about me, that God isn't thinking about me. This couldn't be further from the truth. The father waits for his son every single day to return. When he sees his son from a far distance, the father has compassion on him. He runs to him. He falls on his son's neck, takes him in his arms, kisses him, hugs him. The father gives him him gifts and he gives him a robe. He gives him the best robe. He gives him sandals, a ring. He kills the fattened calf and throws a party inviting every single person who who his son humiliated him in front of. His son was lost and now he's found. This is the only response that makes sense in God's logic. Nothing else makes sense. No other alternative scenario comes close to what God sees as logical. This is the only logical response from the father. And, and, and remember and take note that th- there's no questioning from the father to his son, why did you do this? How come you did X, Y, and Z? Explain to me your rationale. And the same is true for every single one of us. The same is true for me every time I come back to the Lord. This is the only response that makes sense in God's eyes when he sees his son or his daughter coming back. He sees his son or daughter helpless, bruised, scared from our mistakes. The Lord runs to us, accepts us, showers us with gifts, and all of heaven rejoices when one person comes back. In fact, Pope Shenouda says that the Lord in Judgment Day will never ask you, why did you fall? Why did you sin? You will never hear those questions. What you will hear is, why did you not get back up? Why did you not repent? May we please, the church is begging every single one of us, myself first and foremost, let us never ever lose hope. Let us never create a picture of a punitive God who is sitting there watching, waiting for us to make a mistake so that we can be punished. That concept is so far away from who God actually is. Our God is much more compassionate than that. He calls us his sons and his daughters. He tells us to call him father and friend. You know, in the fraction, what does the Buddha say at the end of the fraction? He says, all right, guys, we've just prayed the liturgy. We've just, you know, prayed the fraction. And at the end, Abuna says, right, brace yourselves. Ready? Let us dare with boldness, with purity, with intimacy, without fear, Crying to you, O God, our heavenly Father, saying, and we all together say, Our Father who art in heaven. He is your Father no matter what. Never lose hope. Never let anything take you away from your Father. And never lose hope for anyone in your family that you may be praying for. No one is out of God's reach. There's never a time where it's okay to give up. There's never a time where someone is too far gone that God's mighty right hand cannot come and and save and restore. There was a story once of a small town in a place called Maine in the US. And so it was proposed for um, to be a site for a great hydroelectric plant. Um, And so it's all about this renewable energy. 
And so a big dam was going to be built across the river, and this small town would essentially be submerged underwater. Right? And so when this project was announced, um, the people were given many, many months to relocate, to arrange their affairs and sort things out. But during those few months, something really curious happened. All improvements to the small village of Maine stopped. No new paintings were done. No repairs to anything broken happened on buildings, whether something broke on buildings or roads or sidewalks. No one cared to repair anything. Day by day, the whole town began to look shabbier and shabbier. And a long time before the water came and the dam was built, the town looked uncared for, it looked abandoned, even though there were people who had not yet moved. And one person explained this concept by saying, when there is no hope in a future, when there's no faith in a future, there is no power in the present. That place, Maine, was cursed with hopelessness because it had no future. And so our role is to not allow any room for hopelessness in our mind. Because if we start to believe this lie, then it will translate into a lack of effort in our own spiritual life. We'll think we're stuffed anyway, you know, so we may as well keep doing the wrong. There's no, no reason for improvement. In Proverbs chapter 24, Samuel, uh, Solomon says, For though the righteous falls seven times, they rise again. Can you imagine? The, the reason they say seven is because it's just a big number. Can you imagine falling and how ridiculous it would feel? You fall, you get back up, one. You fall, you get back up, two. And so on and so forth, seven times. No matter how many times we fall, the righteous person gets up straight away again. And our job is to minimize the time we are fallen. It's not to say to ourselves, I'm never going to fall again, because we're all human. We all fall short of the glory of God. That's very clear to us. But our, the, the, what we should be focusing on is not or minimizing the, the, the time we remain away from God. Minimize that so that when we fall, we get back up straight away. God created the potential for new beginnings in every design of his universe. Look around. Every 365 days, we start a new year. Every 24 hours, we start a new day. Every 60 minutes, we start a new hour. God did this for good reason. Because he knew as humans, we need an opportunity for fresh starts. Even spiritual giants in the Bible needed fresh starts. Adam and Eve needed a fresh start after they ate the forbidden fruit. Moses needed a fresh start after killing the Egyptian. David needed a fresh start after his um, adulterous episode with Bathsheba. Elijah, after an emotional breakdown in the desert. His own disciples needed a fresh start after Good Friday. Zacchaeus, the Samaritan woman, St. Mary the Egyptian, St. Augustine, St. Moses the Black, Samson. The list is endless. Every single person needed a fresh start. What about me? I need a fresh start too. Where do I get my fresh start? I get it in confession. I get it in repentance. I get it in the Eucharist. Don't deprive yourself of a new beginning. Live in this godly cycle. We get tempted. We sin. We repent. We confess. Have communion. We get tempted. We sin. We repent. We confess. We have communion. This is the characteristic of God. If we offer him a true repentance... He will accept us. He will reward you with gifts and blessings. Why? Because from God's perspective, God's logic is my son or my daughter was lost and is now found. It's illogical to you and me maybe. But this is what godly logic is. This is a great gospel of great hope. If you ever heard yourself say or think, I'm too weak. I've lost hope. It's too late. I'm too scared. I've taken advantage of God too many times. There's no way he'll accept me. Then remind yourself of this gospel. Read the words of Christ over and over and know for a fact that despite your many mistakes, today God wants you to know that he loves you. He likes you. He cares about you. He sees you. He wants you. He wants to spend time with you. He needs you and he accepts you. And he's waiting for you every single day. 
waiting for you to come back home to him. He ensured that this very gospel, this parable was written so that you and I can go back to it every single day we need to, a million times a day, a thousand times, however many times we need to in the day to remind yourself of it at any time. May we spend the rest of this Lent, starting from today, starting from this liturgy, taking the first steps back to God. For some of us, this may mean I need to confess today, after many months or many years of avoiding him. For others, it may mean that I need to cut off an impure relationship once and for all. I've gone back to it too many times, or an addiction, or a group of friends, or a habit that needs to be replaced. Perhaps it could be that I need to cut off my stubbornness or my grudgings, my grudges, and forgiving my brother or my sister, reconciling with them after many years of being stubborn or not speaking to them or being cold to them, whatever the reason may be, whether I'm right, they're wrong, it's irrelevant. Reminding myself that it's not worth my salvation. My salvation depends on this. Whatever it is, let us from today come back to God, return to Him, knowing in full confidence, 100%, He will accept you. It is biblical. It is the only logical response in God's eyes. When faced, when we, when faced with this great unconditional love, when we see that God will accept us no matter what, we have no other choice but to reciprocate this love. St. John, in fact, says we love him because he first loves us. Let us be done with anything silly in our lives that's making us live with pigs in a swamp, feeding off the rubbish or, or gladly feeding off the rubbish and the food of the pigs and swine and the trivialities of this world and come back to ourselves so that we can draw near to God and see him truly, biblically as a promise, when we draw near to him, he runs back to us. And glory be to God forevermore. Amen. <laughs> He ascended to the heavens and sat at the right hand of his Father. He shall also come back in his glory to judge the living and the dead. Of his kingdom shall not be an end. Truly believe in the Holy Spirit, the life giving Lord. Cease from the Father. We worship and glorify him together with the Father and the Son, who spoke in the prophets. And in one holy and universal apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And we look for the resurrection. Of the dead and the life of the world to come. Ah, 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 and with your spirit, O God, 
the great and the eternal who for man in incorruption and by the life giving manifestation of your only begotten son our lord god and savior jesus christ you destroyed death which was introduced into the world by the envy of the devil you have filled the earth with the heavenly peace for which the hosts of angels glorify you saying glory to god in the highest peace on earth and goodwill towards men pray for the perfect peaceful love and pure apostolic kisses lord have goodness, O God, fill our hearts with your peace. Cleanse us from every lust, every deceit, every hypocrisy, and every vile deed, and from every memory of evil entailing death. Grant that we become worthy to greet one another with a holy kiss, that through Jesus Christ our Lord we may share your immortal and heavenly gifts without falling into condemnation. Exchange your holy kiss with one another. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, hear us and have mercy upon us. Let us offer, let us offer, let us offer in order. Send a reverence to look towards the east, let us attend. Through the intercessions of the Theotokos, Mary, O Lord, grant us the forgiveness of our sins. We worship you, O Christ. With the old good Father and the Holy Spirit, for you have come and saved us. Have mercy of peace and sacrifice. Give thanks to the Lord. It is right and worthy. Right and worthy, right and worthy, truly indeed you are right and worthy, O Lord, Master God of truth, existing before the ages and reigning forever, who's abiding in the highest and beholding the lowly who's created the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that is therein, the Father of our Lord God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, through whom you have created all things seen and unseen, who sits upon the throne of his glory and who is worshipped by all the holy powers. You seated stand up before whom stand the angels, the archangels, the principalities, the dominions, the lordships and the powers. And look towards the east. You are here, around whom stand the full eyed cherubim and the six winged seraphim, praising you continually that ceasing, saying, Let us attend. The cherubim worship you, and the seraphim glorify you. Proclaiming and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord of, of us, heaven Holy, holy, truly, our holy, O Lord, our God, who formed, created, and
placed us in the paradise of joy. When we broke your holy commandment through the serpent's deceit, we were deprived from eternal life and we were exiled from the paradise of joy. You did not entirely abandon us, but contacted us continually through your holy prophets. And finally you appeared to us living in the darkness and the shadow of death. Through your only begotten Son, our Lord God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is of the Holy Spirit and of the Holy Virgin, Saint Mary. Amen. Was incarnate and became man and taught us the ways of salvation. He granted us the grace of rebirth from on high through the water and the spirit. He made us unto himself a united people and sanctified us by your Holy Spirit. He loved his own people of the world and for our salvation he gave himself up to death that had possessed us whereby we were bound and sold on account of our sins. He descended into Hades through the cross. Amen. Amen. He rose from the dead on the third day and ascended into the heavens and sat at your right hand, O Father. You have appointed a day for recompense on which you will appear to judge the world in righteousness and reward each one according to their deeds. Let it be according to your mercy, O Lord, and not on account of instituted for us this great mystery of godliness since he was determined to surrender himself up to death for the life of the world Truly. pure, spotless, undefiled, blessed, life-giving hands. We believe that this is true. towards heaven to you, O God, his Father and Master of all, and when he had given thanks, Amen. he blessed it, Amen. he sanctified it. Amen. We believe, confess, and Glorify He broke it and gave it to his holy disciples and pure apostles, saying, Take, eat of this, all of you, for this is my body which is broken for you and for many to be given for the remission of sins to this in remembrance of me this is true So the cup after supper he mixed it of wine and water, and when he had given thanks, Amen. he blessed it, Amen. he sanctified it. Amen. Again we believe, confess it. Glorify. He 
stirred and gave it to his holy disciples and pure apostles saying, take drink of this all of you, for this is my blood which is shed for you and for many to be given for the remission of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. This is also true in Deva. Amen. For every time you eat of this bread and drink from this cup, you preach my death. Confess my resurrection and remember me till I come. Amen, amen, amen. Your death, Lord, we proclaim your holy resurrection and to the heavens we confess, we praise you, we bless you, we thank you. His resurrection from the dead and his ascension into heaven. He's sitting at your right hand, O Father, and his second coming from heaven, awesome and full of glory. We offer you these oblations from what is yours on every occasion, in every condition, and for all things. Attend to the Lord in all reverence. We praise you. We bless you. We Attend, amen. This bread he makes it into his holy body. We believe. Amen. And this chalice also into his precious blood of the new covenant. We believe. To life to those who shall partake of him. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Make us all worthy of us, partake of the Holy Purification of our souls, bodies and spirits, and become one body and one spirit, and share an inheritance all the saints who are pleased with the beginning. Remember, Lord, the peace of the one holy universe, the apostolic church. Lord, have mercy. This which you brought unto your honor, blood of your Christ, preserve her in peace, and all the Orthodox bishops with her. In the first place, remember, Lord, our Pontiff, Pope, our Tadros, II, second, his part in the apostolic ministry, our Bishop of Daniel. Lord, have mercy. I disclose the word of truth and them grant them unto the church, shepherd your flock in peace. Remember, Lord, the Orthodox part of priests, priests, and deacons. Lord, have mercy. And for all the means of those in the Evangelion and Imperial faithful people, remember, O Lord, to have mercy upon us all. Have mercy upon us, O God, the Father all. 
Lord, the safe is holy place, yours once of our fathers, and for those earning gods, faith, grace, your Lord, remember the lands, plantations, trees, crops, and rivers this year. Bless them. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. According to your grace and ready for seeding and harvesting, accord your Lord a cheerful touch unto the earth, water and dispose of our lives as you deem fit. Crown this year with your goodness for the sake of the poor of your people, the widows, the orphans, the strangers, and for our sake. For all our eyes are focused upon you, for you are our only hope. And we seek your holy name. You provide our food in due course. Deal with us according to your goodness, you the feeder of everyone. Fill our hearts with joy and grace, that we may always have sufficiency in all things and grow in every good deed. Lord, have mercy. Remember, o Lord, those who have offered you these oblations and those on whose behalf they've been offering those who are presenting them. Give them all a heavenly reward. Pray for these sacred and worthy oblations, our sacrifices. And for those who offer them, Lord, have mercy. As decreed by the begotten Son, O Lord, we ought to take part in the commemoration of your saints. Graciously, O Lord, remember the saints who have pleased you ever since the beginning. Our holy fathers, the patriarchs, the prophets, the apostles, the preachers, the evangelists, the martyrs, the confessors, and all the righteous perfected in them in their faith. In the first place, the ever virgin mother of God, all glorified, pure Saint Mary, who in truth gave birth to God the true word, and the foreigner Saint John the Baptist, and Marty the Archdeacon, Saint Stephen the first Marty, the beholder of God, the evangelist Saint Mark the Apostle and Marty, the Patriarch, St. Severus, our teacher, Dioscorus, St. Athanasius, and save us for the sake of your holy name that is called upon us. Let the reader's name, Holy Fathers, the Patriarchs have departed, may the Lord grant repose to their souls and forgive us our sins. May their holy blessings be with us all. Amen. Glory be to you, Lord. Glory be to mentioned those in our minds and those forgotten remember Lord, of grace remember the soul of your servants lewis hannah philomi permi deepa kameni taufik botros albert mikhail sefer soad mikhail fahima fanus kriele son may you O lord grant repose to the souls of those who have passed over to you in the land of eternal living in the heavenly jerusalem and we to the foreigners in this world, preserve us in your faith and grant us your peace unto the end. As it was, so shall it be from generation to
us into your kingdom, that your great and holy name will be glorified, blessed and exalted in everything. Honorable and blessed is your name, with Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us give thanks to the Almighty God, the Father of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ, for his consider us now worthy to stand up in this holy place to lift up our hands and serve your holy name. Let us also ask him to make us worthy to share and offer in his divine and immortal mysteries. sent his only begotten son into the world he taught us the law and the commandments of the holy scriptures he taught us that fasting and praying expel the devil and evil spirits he said this kind can come out by nothing but by prayer and fasting <laughs> By fasting and praying, Elijah was taken up to heaven and Daniel was saved from the lion's den. By fasting and praying, Moses received the commandments inscribed by the finger of God. Fasting and praying were adopted by the people of Nineveh so that God spared them, remitted their sins and turned his wrath away from them. Fasting and praying were pursued by the prophets that they foretold the advent of Christ many years before his incarnation. Fasting and praying aided the apostles who evangelized to all nations, converting them to Christianity, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Likewise, the martyrs gave up their lives for the name of Christ, who declared the proper confession before Pontius Pilate. By fasting and praying, the righteous and the cross-bearers escaped to the mountains and the wilderness and caves to pursue their tremendous love for Christ our King. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Let us also pursue fasting by uprooting every evil and by living in purity and righteousness that we may approach this holy sacrifice and gratefully partake of it, so that with a pure heart, an illuminated soul and an unashamed face, a sincere faith and perfect love, unshakable hope, we dare in intimacy without fear, calling to you, O God, our Heavenly Father, saying, 
Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And then leave us under temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, for thine is the kingdom, the power and glory forever. Amen. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Bow your heads before the Lord. Before you. To God in reverence. Peace be with you all. And with your spirit. Remember, Lord, your congregation. Bless them. Redeem us with your spirit. Listen in the fear of God. I mean, I mean, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the holy people. Blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of our God, and sanctification is by the Holy Spirit. Amen. One is the Holy Father, one is the Holy Son, one is the Holy Spirit. Ah, ah. Blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of our God, Amen. Amen. Holy and honored are the true body and blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of our God, Amen. Amen. The body and blood of Emmanuel, our God. This is so in truth, Amen. Amen. I believe, I believe, and profess unto my last breath that this is the life giving body which are in the begotten Son, our Lord God and Saviour Jesus Christ, took of Our Lady, the Queen of us all, the Holy Mother of God, the Theotokos, Saint Mary. He made it one with his divinity without mingling or interchanging alteration, and confessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate, and gave it up willingly on the Holy Cross for us all. Truly, I believe that his divinity never departed from his humanity, not even for a single instant or a twinkling of an eye, given for the salvation and remission of sins and eternal life to those who partake of him. I believe, I believe, I believe that this is so in truth. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. I believe, I believe. I believe that this is true. Amen. Pray for us and for all the Christians who ask us to remember them in the house of the Lord. The peace and love of Jesus Christ be with you. You sing a psalm, hallelujah. Pray for the merit of partaking for these holy, pure, and heavenly mysteries. Lord, have mercy. We're celebrating Lent at the moment, and so during Lent, the church encourages everyone to be fasting. If we haven't been fasting, please still have communion today, but start fasting today. If, um, if you haven't confessed in a long time, or there's any other reason why you're not having communion, please still have communion today, and see your confession, Father, this week. Have a blessed Lent.
Zen for the night of Sabbath. Only God can cover sin As he took the leafy garments And he clothed their shame with skin Days and months and years unfolding Clearly showed what sin had wrought Fallen Adam's children learning Lessons fallen parents taught All these sacrificial offerings Crested as a crimson flood Patriarchs and priests atoning For their sins with cleansing blood What these sacrifices promised From a God who sought to bless Came at last the second Adam Priest and King of righteousness Son of God, incarnate Saviour Son of man, both Christ and Lord Who in naked shame would offer On the cross his blood outpoured Lamb of God, once slain for sinners, host who spreads this meal divine, pledges here our sins are covered, pledge received in bread and wine. Take and eat, this is my body, given on the cross for you. Take and drink, this cup of blessing Is my blood poured out for you Taste and see the bliss of heaven Known by saints around the throne Where the Lamb in closest union Lives to love and feed his own From his riven side forever Flows the purest stream of love, love that robes us with a raiment worn by all who feast above. Blood of bulls is shed no longer, now we drink the blood of Christ. Now the time of grace and favour through this spotless sacrifice. 
Ever, Lord, impress upon us Only you can cover sin Take our worthless self-made garments Clothe our shame and cleanse within Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy, and Christ will forgive them in judgment, and dwell with His Spirit in them. In the Gospel it is written, a certain man had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, give me my portion of good. So he divided his livelihood and gave to each one his portion. A short time after that day, the younger son gathered all together. He journeyed to a far country, lived his life the way he wanted, and there wasted his possessions in pleasures and prodigal living. But when he spent all what he had, there arose a severe famine in that land. He began to be in desperate need to feed himself, so he looked for work, a citizen of that country, sent him to his fields to feed the swine. He would gladly fill his stomach with the pots that the swine had ate. Just a few announcements. The first is that liturgies during Lent are as follows. On weekdays, there will be a Mass from 5 to 7 a.m. and 8.30 to 10 a.m. And on Wednesdays and Fridays only, there will be an extra late Mass from 1 to 2.30 p.m. The second announcement concerns and deal appointments. If you would like a visit from one of the fathers, please fill in the form or contact Rebecca. Details found on the St. Mark's app. The third announcement is that there is a Bible study competition during Lent on the book of Isaiah, chapters 40 to 66. The hard copies are available at church. If you would like these documents to be emailed to you, please send an email to announcements at stmarks.com.au. The fourth announcement is that cookies for Easter are being prepared. So please put your order in early and let us know when you want to pick it up. Details are on the church app for contact. The fifth announcement is there are health seminars in the next three weeks. The next one is on next Saturday after the Vesper at 7.45 p.m. by Dr. Remy, Romy Bichet, who's an endocrinologist, and discussing the medical management of obesity. The sixth announcement is there's a St. Oneness Charity Gala dinner on Saturday, May 18, 2024. There's an invitation on the church app. The seventh announcement, there is a St. Mark Families Camp from the 6th to the 8th of September. The venue is at the Wollongong Leisure Surf Resort. More details to come. And finally, Sunday School will be cancelled next weekend on both Saturday and Sunday. Other services like choir, drama, library, etc. will also be cancelled because the servants will be at the church servants camp from Friday to Sunday. Thank you. But when he came back to himself, he said, My father's hired servants have enough bread and more to spare, while I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father. 
and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you and no longer worthy to be your son. He arose and came to his father, but when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The son sorrow said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight and no longer fit fit to be your son. Make me one of your hired workers. The father said to his servant, Bring out the best robe and dress him. Put on his hand the golden ring and on his feet put new sandals. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. With joy let us eat and be merry. For my son was dead and now lives. He was lost and now he is found. Now his older son was in the field as he came drew near to the house. He heard music and people dancing. So he called one of the servants, asked him what are all these things meant. The servant said, your brother has come. Let us sing with your angels, saying, Glory be to God in the highest, peace and go towards men. Amen. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of the ages. Amen. We proclaim and say, O oh, our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ fasted for us. Forty days and forty nights, save us and have mercy on us, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord bless us, amen, bless me, bless me, Lord the repentance, forgive me and say the blessing, amen, eseshopi. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Lord be thy on earth. That's in heaven. Thou yes. our daily bread and forgive us our sins. So we have given the trust against us. Lead us not temptation, deliver us from evil. Jesus Christ, our Lord, for thine sin, the Father, and glory for every new Now the love of God the Father, the grace of Him, the Son, the gift and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace, the peace of the Lord be with you all. Have a blessed Lent.